Rail transport has been a longtime competitor with trucks. At one point, they even moved the majority of long haul freight in the United States. However, by 1978, rail's share of the market dropped to roughly 35%. Fast forward to today, and according to ACT research, trucks dominate the shipping market hauling roughly 80% of all freight. Although when truckload capacity is tight and spot rates rise as a consequence, shippers typically start looking for alternatives, which is often transporting their goods by rail. Over the course of this video, we're going to dive into the pros and cons of both trucking and rail, the products most frequently shipped by each, and how the pandemic affected the market between the two. Don't forget to subscribe to our channel if you want to keep up to date with the world of transport, and let's get into it. There's a lot to consider when you're thinking about shipping by rail or truck. Both are solid choices in ground transportation, yet have their unique challenges. So what are the differences? Seeing as trains are designed to move along rails, this limits route options as there are fewer rail routes in comparison to road routes. Road vehicles, like trucks, have quite a bit more freedom in that sense. However, unlike trains, they are forced to share this space with civilian cars and trucks. For this reason, trains can be faster in the sense that they don't have to deal with congestion on roads, but despite this, more often than not, you'll have to use truckload shipping for the final piece of the journey. Cost is also a major factor that comes into play for shippers. Coordinating a rail shipment will involve more work than a point A to point B truck shipment. For freight going a short distance, this additional work for a rail shipment can reduce the cost benefit ratio of using rail. On the other hand, you can move more with a train than a truck, which in some cases can balance out the cost difference between the two. So is it cheaper to ship by rail or truck? Well, typically speaking, it is cheaper to ship by truck. However, this isn't always absolute. When it comes to short distances, using a truck will almost always be cheaper as there is only one carrier involved, meaning there is only one party to pay. As journeys get longer though, and especially if they cross through different regions, trains can be more affordable. As for speed, it can be difficult to figure out which option is faster. Truckload shipping is usually offered as an end-to-end -end service, which means no other means of transportation are needed to get goods to where they need to go. Trains, on the other hand, can't offer this in most cases. The flexibility of trucking alone often wins out when shippers are comparing it to rail transport. For those willing to spend a little bit more, trucking companies even offer expedited shipping services, which can most definitely speed up their journey. In terms of actual speed, freight trains typically travel around 50 miles per hour. While this may not sound that fast, it's worth considering that trains don't have to stop at lights, deal with junctions, or go through different speed limits. A big upper hand for trucking is not just its speed, but also its visibility. Higher prices are helping both intermodal companies and railroads get more frequent business. However, that business was usually only given by shippers who didn't need their freight to get anywhere anytime soon. According to Dean Croak at DAT Solutions, a freight analyst company, quote, if you have a load that doesn't need to be anywhere in a hurry, you put it on a train. When speaking at the APICS conference in Chicago, Nick Little, the director of railway education at Michigan State University, pointed out how rail doesn't offer the same visibility that trucks do. Well, at least for shippers. Speaking to a full room, Little said, quote, the railway knows exactly where your freight is, they just don't tell you. Automatic identification tags, which are attached to rail freight, have helped speed up data entry for railroads. However, they depend on the products moving past fixed scanners that use radio frequency beams to catch freight at various points. This process is often delayed because freight has to move past scanners to be tagged. Trucks, on the other hand, at least most of them to be clear, have GPS devices that are always transmitting in near real time. This allows for shippers to have continuous communication with trucks, while on the other hand, railroads only offer occasional communication. As for commodities shipped by rail, animals, vehicles, and natural resources have all been historical examples and are still the main products to this day. As of 2018, motor vehicles and their parts were the most popular item to ship by train, which makes sense because these goods are quite large and most trucks don't have the space to carry many of them at a time. Mineral fuels were a close follow-up to vehicles, with resources like coal, oil, and natural gas being transported by rail very frequently. Seeing as many of these fuels can be dangerous, it's definitely best that they usually end up on trains, as this minimizes risks seeing as trains suffer far fewer accidents. Coming in third place, plastic is a major product transported by rail. However, over the years, rail has seen less and less consumer goods come their way. Trucks, on the other hand, easily eclipsed the number of goods transported by train. The computer industry is one of the most lucrative on the planet, and people in just about every city, town, and village in the world want to access these revolutionary machines. 
Hell, making this video, I had two in front of me, one for research and one for writing, so it should come as no surprise that computers and parts were the most common items to be found on trucks as of 2018. Trucking also reigns supreme when it comes to the transportation of food and consumer goods. As for capacity of these two modes, rail definitely reigns supreme. Trucks haul anywhere from 20,000 to 80,000 pounds per trip, while a single rail car can have three to four times the amount of a truck. In fact, one entire train can account for several hundred trucks on the road. Now, how did the pandemic affect the relationship between rail and trucking? At the beginning of the pandemic, there was a surge in imports from Asia, which were up 34% from May to October of 2020. Typically, trucks would handle most of the imported freight over long hauls, taking freight from ports to inland points inside the United States. However, as we've seen for the last two years, the trucking industry has troubles keeping up when demand surges. That being said, this issue isn't unique to trucking. This led many shippers to start considering other options. However, only certain types of freight translate well between rail and road. Dry goods, for instance, which typically include things like clothes, electronics, sporting goods, and toys, are containers that can be hauled by both rail and truck. Intermodal transportation, which means the freight takes multiple modes of transportation from point A to point B, makes sense if there is a longer lead time. Many were concerned that the rail market would start infringing on the trucking market as it struggled to keep up with capacity, but according to Jim Blaze, a railway analyst, railroads are not going to go out and seize 10% market share from trucking because they don't have equipment capacity. Part of this imbalance is because of the fact that it is even harder for railroads than trucks to boost capacity. For instance, it can take anywhere from 12 to 18 months to actually get and add a freight car. On the other hand, trucking fleets can walk onto sales lots and buy almost new or used trucks immediately, that is if they can afford the wildly inflated prices. All things considered, the pandemic was quite a turnaround for rail. Rail volumes were down for seven quarters straight until the numbers went positive in the fall of 2020. We'd love to hear what you think. Will rail continue to make a comeback or will trucking forever reign supreme? Let us know what you think in the comments below. Also, don't forget to like and subscribe to keep up with new content, and we'll catch you next time.